September 3rd, 1939, Britain declares war on Germany, marking the climax of World War II. As Hitler's army grew, the world was taken by surprise. Great Britain became weary on whether they should join the war or not. And at the same time, there was only one man willing to stand up against all odds. A man who did his best during the worst of times. A man known for his success and failures, triumphs and tragedies. He would become one of the world's most successful leaders during World War II. Today, he is known as the man of the free world. The man who stood up to him. Winston Churchill's stand against Hitler in Nazi Germany inspired many. He faced major opposition for his opinion to enter World War II. His predictions of the opposing side's plan was believed to have been the first of his time. Many of what he has done in the past has changed history as to what we know today. His message to never give up was the beacon of hope for his people. He caused Great Britain to question what the world would be like today if they hadn't fought for freedom. Winston Leonard Spencer Churchill was born on November 30, 1874. As a young child, Churchill grew up in Dublin, Ireland. He did poorly in his first few schools, and in April 1888, he was sent to the Horror Boarding School near London. His personality features were kind of typical of those from what are called the ruling classes in Britain. He was uh, arrogant because they were trained, they were raised and, you know, schooled in ways that they knew they were born to rule. Well here, Churchill decided to enroll in the Haro Rifle Corps, which shaped the path to his future military career. Later on, he went to Sandhurst, Britain's West Point. Churchill joined the Fort Hussars in 1895 and served in the Indian Northwest Frontier and the Sudan. While in the army, he wrote two books on his experiences, the story of the Malakan Field Force in 1898 and the River War in 1899. After military, Churchill went on to becoming a war correspondent. While on a scouting expedition of the Boer War in South Africa, he was taken prisoner by the Boers. Churchill made headlines when he escaped, traveling almost 300 miles to Portuguese territory in Mozambique. After his military career was over, Churchill went into politics and became a member of parliament for Oldham in 1900. Initially a member of the Conservative Party, he moved to the Liberal Party in 1904. Their taxation will make food dearer. Our taxation will make land cheaper. That is our policy. That is the issue. Choose for yourselves. Eventually, he was appointed to the Prime Minister's Cabinet as President of Board of Trade. In 1911, he was appointed First Lord of Admiralty and focused on the modernization of the British Navy. He favored using airplanes in combat and even took flying lessons himself to understand its military potential. However, it was at the point where he was blamed for leading his army into the 1950 invasion of Turkey, the aim to knock down the Ottoman Empire, a German ally at the time. The British troops suffered more than 46,000 deaths. Churchill later resigned after this tragic event. In the 1929 general election, the Conservative government was defeated, and Churchill had lost his position. He returned in 1939 when Britain declared war on Germany, officially starting the beginning of World War II. Winston Churchill faced many oppositions in his campaign during World War II. Many British politicians at the time believed it safer to appease Hitler rather than declare war. Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain signed the Munich Agreement with Hitler in September of 1938. Germany was allowed to occupy a part of Czechoslovakia. In his famous We Shall Never Surrender speech, Churchill proposed, We shall defend our island, whatever the cost may be. We shall fight on the beaches. We shall fight on the landing grounds. We shall fight in the fields and in the streets. We shall fight in the hills. We shall never surrender. He was warning the House of Commons that Hitler would be a menace. Winston Churchill was completely against appeasement 
He said, no, you know, this is a threat. It's just going to grow. The more you appease it, Hitler's never going to be satisfied. He was very early in recognizing that. He was the only um, one of his party. On September 1939, after the Nazis invaded Poland in defiance of the British demand, Great Britain declared war on Germany. Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain retired shortly after the start of the war, and Churchill was elected to become Prime Minister by King George himself. I felt as if I was walking with destiny, that all my past life had been in preparation for this hour and this trial. I slept the sleep of the just. On May 10, 1948, Churchill's first speech after having become Prime Minister was about encouraging his people to fight. In this speech, his most memorable saying was, I have nothing to offer but blood, tears, toil, and sweat. Winston Churchill was able to persuade the nation that not only could we hang on, but ultimately win this war. His argument to enter changed life as we know it today. Without him, Britain wouldn't have joined the battle, and without Britain, Hitler's army would have continued to hold strong. Churchill's view on religion and white supremacy led to many people believing whether they should trust him as a leader or not. But we forget that Churchill fought against Hitler, a man known for his harsh punishments against the Jewish people. It was Churchill who warned of Hitler's danger, and in return, after stopping Hitler, Churchill should have really been known as a hero for having saved a whole population of Jews. Everybody in Winston Churchill's generation was racist. The only thing that distinguished the Nazis were this, they were particularly racist. But no, the entire generation, late 19th century, early 20th century, this was the era of nationalism and social Darwin. Some of Hitler's comments on Churchill included him saying, I feel a deep disgust for this type of unscrupulous politician who wrecks whole nations. I feel it to be my duty before my own conscience to appeal once more to reason and common sense in Great Britain as much as elsewhere. I consider myself in a position to make this appeal since I am not the vanquished begging favors, but the victor speaking in the name of reason. Hitler believed that Churchill would destroy Great Britain if he continues with his plans, but Churchill wasn't willing to give up. He believed in himself, and the people of Great Britain believed in him as well. This stance was the very reason Great Britain had won the war. Well, and I think we're, we're still talking about two people of extraordinary self-discipline and deep, deep nationalism. I mean, Hitler was obviously a vicious nationalist Nazi enthusiast for the nation of Germany, but we have to be realistic. So was Winston Churchill for his own nation, for England. These are two, while they're terribly different, and one autocratic, dictatorial, the other um, more associated with parliamentary democracy, they are both vehement national. They're both vehemently vehement nationalists. Throughout 1941, almost 20,000 British civilians were killed by Nazi bombs. Churchill maintained good relations with the U.S. President Franklin D. Roosevelt following the attack on Pearl Harbor. He supported the U.S. in his counterattack on Germany and Japan. When the U.S. entered the war in December 1941, Churchill became more confident of a victory for the Allied forces. Throughout 1943 and 1944, the Allies fought many bitter battles and sustained many casualties, but Germany was slowly being pushed back. On June 6, 1944, more than 160,000 Allied troops landed on a 50-mile stretch of heavily fortified French coastline to fight Nazi Germany on the beaches of Normandy, France. Their sacrifice allowed more than 100,000 soldiers to begin the slow, hard march across Europe to defeat Adolf Hitler's troops. In early May 1945, the Allied powers have won the war. They were defeated because Hitler was stupid enough to take on having conquered Western Europe and much of Eastern and Central Europe, conquered on the effort to conquer the Soviet Union, and the Japanese were stupid enough to attack the United States, bringing the largest power in the world into the fight. Churchill had done his best to warn people of the dangers that lied before them. He was the first to have foresaw Hitler's plans before anyone else could. He took his stand against Hitler by rallying Great Britain and informing them of the threat Hitler posed. For this reason, Britain was prepared for the worst. Throughout his life, he had failed time and time again, but with the belief of the people and his strong willpower, his speeches conquered all. He knew that whatever Hitler planned, he and his people will fight. And so they fought. Fought at the finest hour.